So we've talked about meat a lot here on the podcast over the years, everything from butchering your own meat, raising your own chickens, raising your own beef, and everything in between. But today's topic is a different take on meat. Uh, And we're going to be talking about what does it look like to eat meat primarily as like the main part of your diet. This is something that's been coming to my attention more and more over the years. It's more and more popular. Some people call it zero carb. Some people call it the carnivore diet. And I'm really excited to have a good friend of mine here to talk about this today. It's the one and only Justin Rhodes. Welcome to the podcast, Justin. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This is cool. Yeah. So I feel like when we were talking about topics, we could have taken this a lot of angles. I mean, obviously you're known as the chicken guy and then you have, you know, your YouTube uh, mastery and all that. But when you were like, let's talk about this diet, I'm like, heck yeah. Like it's interesting. It's a little bit off the beaten path and it really fits into this theme. So this will be good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I guess start me off with kind of, well, first off, do you call what you do the carnivore diet or zero carb? Or what, how do you define it? Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not the carnivore diet. Mostly. I mean, to me, I'm so literal, I think yeah. in a literal sense. So for me, the carnivore diet and the way I started out was carnivore, where I was only eating animal, uh, basically. Mm-hmm. But there are some, if you talk to Sean Barker, the carnivore diet doesn't include dairy. So... The strictest I ever got was animal and no fruit, no vegetables, nothing. Now, you know, having started out real hardcore, feeling good, feeling better, liking it, losing weight, you know, I have a lot of inflammation. So if I look at a carb, I gain weight. Like I've recently just gained 20 pounds just from, and and you would look at the way we're eating for me to gain weight. It's like just totally ridiculous. Like if I eat like Rebecca who eats really well. Uh, like we're talking about grain free, all, mm. all the things I'm gaining weight. So I have to really watch it. I don't know if I'm getting older. It's got, I got a lot of inflammation. Yeah. So now what I've kind of evolved into is an animal based diet. Uh, as I, as I grow and learn and want to sustain on something, I want, I want something that ultimately could be a lifestyle instead of going on a diet, getting off of it. And then having to go on the diet again, I want to sustain a lifestyle. So uh, that's including fruits, which I'm sure we'll get into it a little bit, but are less toxic. I mean, people are going to be shocked that I'm about, I'm I'm going to say there's some toxins in vegetables. I mean, it's totally like, (laughs) where are we going with this? It's crazy talk. So uh, fruits actually want to be eaten and we eat, I'll eat them. But now I'm getting to the point where even if I did that, just like, uh, animal-based fruits, I'm still gaining weight because of my inflammation, because I've, I've mm-hmm. got Lyme disease and, or whatever, whatever my inflammation was. I had reactive arthritis over the summer. So I've gotten to where now I'm, you, you mentioned low carbs. Now I'm trying, and Ken Berry, the, um, I forget his, uh, he might go by Ken Berry on the socials. He was saying, allow yourself 50 grams of carbs a day. So that's where I'm going now. Can I do 50 grams of carbs? So I guess I'm counting carbs, 50 grams of carbs. And can I maintain or actually can I lose? Cause I'm trying to, you know, maintain, cause I would just keep going. I mean, people might look at me and say, you don't need to lose weight. Well, if I kept on this trajectory yeah. in, in, in four more months, you would be saying, yeah, you need to lose a little weight. So I'm trying to nip it in the bud. So yeah. can I do 50 car- carbs? It'd be all right. And these are clean carbs. These are like super easily digest things like white rice um, and fruits and uh, yeah, white rice, fruits and kombucha. These are kind of things that I like to introduce. Uh, even listen, Jill, even inter- allowing myself peanut butter. I mean, I'm a peanut butter and chocolate kind of person. Like that's my, that's my kryptonite. And Carnivore EMD posted the other day about why, you know, pe- why you need to watch out for peanut butter. You know, peanut butter, uh, it's a legume. It's a, it's a seed and that is totally fortified to protect itself. It doesn't want to be eaten. It's, right. it's going to protect itself because if you eat that seed, that's it, you, you end its line. <laughs> so it's naturally fortified. And he went on about all the different things that peanut butter can do to you. And somebody said in the comments, oh, oh, you know, he concluded that post with, and why do you want to eat peanut butter? Well, somebody in the comments nailed it. They said, 
I hear you. I just can't go there. Put it on my tombstone, death by peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so I'm going to let everybody know right now, what's life without peanut butter every, yeah. every once in a while? What's life without cupcakes, uh, birthday cake? There's something to be said, too, about just relaxing and not worrying about things. You'll see some of the healthiest people in the world are, the, are, are eating all the junk. Yeah. But they also don't have a lot of stress. They're not stressing about it. So there is something a little bit said to me about that. So you're saying basically you're doing like you call it the animal diet. Maybe you should trademark that real quick. <laughs> yeah. Somebody animal else based diet, right? The animal diet versus the carnivore. So carnivore, by yeah. definition, if we like look and I I'm going to I'm telling all the watchers and listeners right now, I'm a little skeptical on this. And I told you this already. Yeah. Like I, I know it's becoming more popular and I've kind of looked at it and been like, eh, I'm not, I'm not buying yeah. this, which is why I wanted to have this conversation. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I want to be educated and figure out the ins and outs. Yeah. So if we went to a carnivore guru, they're eating yeah. just meat. Is that right? Like literally yeah. meat. There are some, there are some, not even just meat. There are some that would just eat beef and, and their stick just is, okay. uh, you're just eating beef, uh, but also eat the, they'll say nose to tail. So also be eating literally from the nose to tail, the brains, the testicles, the heart, the liver, the, the kidneys, you know, the liver has got to be one of the most nutrient dense foods in the world. Yeah. Uh, so they believe that you can get a lot of your, uh, essential, every, everything you need from that, essentially not to okay. just survive, but to thrive. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm with you and you're not going to hurt my feelings go, going on it. I'm willing to have this discussion because. I'm, I'm skeptic sometimes too. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I can only go off my own experience. What they're saying seems to make sense where basically the premise is this. And I, I, I remember telling somebody this and they'll just laugh. I mean, a lot of people will, will hear this and laugh, but nothing wants to be eaten, eaten. And it makes sense to me. Yes. Uh, including vegetables. Vegetables don't want to be eaten. Animals don't want to be eaten. Animals run. That's their defense. And a vegetable can't run. So it's, it's defense is to put off chemicals essentially to prevent itself from be eat from being eaten. And so somebody in my case, I would think, especially maybe who are compromised, mm -hmm. that's going to be especially uh, difficult, but it does seem to like some people are more okay with it than not. And here's the thing too, Jill, yeah. I don't like vegetables. I really don't. Do you like vegetables? I do. I mean, depends on the vegetable. I think I <laughs> like, would miss it. I think I would miss like, yes. I like the brassicas, which I don't know if, what category, if they're like a bad one or a good one. I love yeah, like, they're Brussels bad. They're, they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> they're my favorite though. But, uh, yeah. I know. I know. And yeah. Rebecca likes them too. Yeah. So, you know, we just had, she just made this chicken ca casserole where she had broccoli and chicken and rice and Okay, the whole family's eating that. It's one dish. I'm not going to be that guy. Sure. I'm not going to make Rebecca make a whole nother thing for me. And I'm not going to pick out the, uh, you know, I'll eat the extra rice. I'm not going to count carbs that day. I'll eat 100, 100 grams. Well, I did pick out that broccoli because it's just not a struggle for me. I, it's you okay. It's probably it, yeah. one of my favorite vegetables. Uh, but that's not really a struggle. So a struggle is rice. I really like that mm -hmm. white rice well, eating too much of it, but I think it's probably getting to be more popular and everybody is starting to understand more that grains aren't the best, mm -hmm. you know, it just turns into sugar and that's coming into light. You know, we already gluten, everybody's, everybody, a lot of people are aware of that. Some people it doesn't affect, but it's affecting more and more people. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's getting, so some of it is, Oh, and Jill, I'm telling you this, this is another factor. If my whole family could get on board with this and I do intermittent fasting and sometimes, which means only two meals a day yeah, during an eight hour window, I could pull it off where I eat OMAD one meal a day. Really? And that's eating within a four hour window and fasting for 20 hours. Jill, okay. can you imagine this? If I could get my family on board to just eating animal. Just meat that we pick yeah. out of the freezer. You know, we're not, we're, we're not canning this stuff. We're not gardening is hard work. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Three different things and having them all ready at the same time is hard. Yeah. So for one appeal to me is, and it's useless because I have a family, but, but one appeal would be 
because they eat normally. If we would all just eat steak or, or, or chicken or a pork butt, just put some salt on it. Yeah, sure. Order the Redmond's. You're going to have to have the Redmond. It's going to yeah. have to come in the mail, right? Yeah. yeah for <laughs> but sure. you see that you're cooking yes. one thing and it's, so there's also a convenience factor too. But I can, I can see that like the, it, even I've been exploring or reading more about intermittent fasting. Um, yeah. And I, you know, as I kind of the season of my life, you and I've talked about this on your podcast, which for those of you um, who have an abundance plus membership, or you listen to Justin's podcast, yeah. we did a very long episode, that was awesome. That's up there. You can check it out. We talk about everything you can imagine, but you know, I've been exploring breaking apart systems and like asking questions of a lot of things. And I started to go, why do we eat three times a day? Like who said that was yeah. the only way to eat? Like, why, why is that like accepted? What if we push on that boundary and that norm a little bit? So I've been like, what if I skipped a meal and would I feel better? Would I feel worse? Um, yeah, so I I'm, think that I'm you nailed it. That up. Yeah. You're really good. You and Christian are really good about asking that why. And, and, and in the podcast, you, you mentioned that you, you started your journey with questioning something. I don't, I don't remember what it was exactly specifically for us. It was, we started questioning uh, conventional milk, but, but that's where, but you, you don't have to stop there. You don't have to stop at homesteading, you know, or at growing your own food. Right. You can start and then eventually you get to why, well, wait, why are we eating three times a day? You start thinking about our ancestors and maybe how uh, the native Americans would have, Eat. It isn't <laughs> eight, 12 and five. It would have been, exactly. you know, working really hard on a hunt, feasting, just stuffing yourself because you don't know when the next meal is coming and then yes. you're going to have to work for it. So even thinking about that too, like as you incorporate workouts and training and working on the farm, it's probably a better idea to work really hard and then eat because it stimulates the hunt, you mm -hmm. know, that, yeah. that that has been ingrained to us in, in for a long time. So I love that you would bring the why into this. We, yeah. Aaron, I, I went black there. Okay. Oops. We already did the, we do the intermittent fasting. Re Rebecca eats a little snack in the morning. The kids eat, you know, grab some fruit or something. And already just going two meals a day, it's a big deal, Jill, because it's not like you just prepare. You have to prepare to prepare, transition to prepare, I should say. And then you have the meal. And then you have to clean up and then you have to train, what you call transition again. And if you have kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. You yes. have to move them from this dining kitchen mode to clean up to something else that if you're going outside, you got to put on the coats, you got to find the shoes, you got to count for that transition and, and asking the whys and going to just two meals a day. And maybe instead of three, that's one thing that's helped with me doing the more carnivore is well, family. Well, first of all, everybody's getting a little more meat. I'm excited about eating meat. So I cook the meat mm -hmm. and Rebecca will cook the, the sides and, and she likes and enjoys that. And so that's a dynamic. There's people who like Jason from Sutherland, a buddy of mine, I don't think he'd mind sharing this. It was hard for him because um, they didn't quite do that. And, and Lorraine's making two meals, right. you know, the way, the way somebody cooks. If you don't cook like this, where, which I'm not saying is right, like if you're if you're used to cooking casserole or whatever, this transition would be harder. Yes. But if you're used to how we were already used to a meat, uh, a green, and a starch, well then, that's a little bit easier transition, and you can see how maybe me as the as the carnivore, well I'll be in charge of the meat, and everybody's going to get a little bit more meat. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and maybe a little less. Rebecca knows if she comes around, we'll get her, we'll get her talking here, but, um, she gets it. Yeah. And I think that she that's, loves broccoli. I know. I love broccoli too. <laughs> like, I don't know how I could get with the broccoli. I think it's important for multiple reasons. I think as we, as people get into whole foods more and you're growing more of your food, I think breaking the meals down into those elements is really crucial. Um, you know, it's kind of, I know my, you know, I think you and I are close to the same age, like the child of the eighties, yeah. like our, it was like casserole, everything. And when yes. we take that mindset and we try to turn that into even just gluten-free or dairy-free and yeah. do substitutes for all of those pieces, parts that gets really overwhelming. Um, yes. or trying to figure out how do I grow all the components of tater tot casserole? Well, that's wow. pretty much impossible, but you know, take that out of the equation and think of food in those pieces like meat. 
vegetable or green and starch. That's, that's how, as I've gotten more into home thing, that's how I've cooked, how I cook. And I think that just makes a lot more sense in, especially when we're looking at a specialty diet, like you're doing. You nailed it because what you, what a lot of people do is starts maybe with their, a diet change. They, they, they find out they're terribly reactive to gluten. Well, then they do gluten free everything and they still keep going the way they're going. But actually I'm not even sure if like the gluten free cake mix is probably worse <laughs> overall I, for your I body. I kind of have that opinion. Than yes. just getting the gluten because there ends up being yeah. more ingredients, it's all this crazy stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and then it's hard. And then to, to cook like a gluten free cake is not nearly as fun as, as gluten, as doing gluten uh, biscuits. Uh, so what we end up doing is actually, was exactly what you said. You have to actually change your mindset and say, oh, well, do I need to do casseroles? What's up with that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just because mom did them? Right. No, um, that gluten, meat, vegetables, and fruit are naturally gluten free. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yep. Just eat the stuff that's naturally gluten free instead of trying to cram it into this box. I mean, you can do that. We're just saying, I think we're both saying yeah. it's just more difficult and sometimes, and maybe it's okay to ask why every once in a while and you come up with something better. Yes. Amen. Okay. So you're eating, you're eating meat. And we were, we were there at your house uh, a month or two ago and you know, it was, yeah. it was delicious. We had meat and you would put like butter on the meat and then um, tallow, you know, using a lot of tallow and ch whether it was chicken, beef or lamb. So you're doing that, then you're yeah. doing animals. So you're doing eggs, cheese, butter, dairy, that sort of thing along with it. Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's kind of a more of a yeah, hybrid. So today was for lunch and this is something too, people hear fruits and they think of apples and pears. Well, guess what I had for, well, dinner last night. So it was my 45 grams of white rice, which is a cup of rice mm -hmm. and, uh, chicken, uh, roasted chicken. So I would cut up my chicken and, and put it on that on a bed of, well, I guess, I guess Jill, there is a, a vegetable I don't want to give up and that's onions. And I just, oh, I, I just, that. I just gotta have the do onions. onions. And so we did yeah. onions and zucchini. Now, wait a minute. Zucchini, the zucchini is a vegetable. Actually, no, it's not. It's a fruit. The seeds on the inside. So there's a lot of things that we think of as uh, vegetables that are okay. technically a fruit. Okay. And so I'll tell you this. And people, yeah. okay, again, so these these fruits, they want to be eaten. This is how they reproduce. The apple wants you to eat it. You ready for this, Jill? It wants you to eat it. It doesn't want you to bite on the seed. Actually, mm -hmm. if you bite in an apple seed, it's terrible, isn't it? It's like yeah, bitter. Yeah, yeah. If you eat the whole core, you, you get into that bitterness. It actually wants you to swallow that seed, poop it out somewhere else yeah, in a fertilizer bomb. And what happens? A yeah, tree grows. Tree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's how they uh, continue their species. So fruit wants to be eaten. Same thing okay. with, you'll see it, uh, Jill, in your, in your chicken yard yeah. or your pig, if you have a pig yard. We'll see it all the time. We could let the chickens and the and the pigs plant gardens for us. We have before mm -hmm. by just feeding them our scraps, our scrap fruits. So the zucchinis, the pumpkins, the squashes, the the apples, pears. Give them that. The chickens won't eat and digest all those seeds. They'll poop some out. They'll scratch them, leave some out, and you've moved them out. And I'm telling you, Jill, we'll have a jungle garden. Mm -hmm. yep. Cucumbers and and, and tomatoes and the, the animals will plant the gardens and, and the plants are cooperating because in the consumption of that, in the swallowing of that and passing it through, it's actually strengthening and, and, and increasing its species. <laughs> that, yeah. And that makes a ton of sense. So we're looking at, I mean, we're breaking it into category of fruit and vegetable, but another way to look at that would be, you know, the fruit would be anything that you could eat it without killing the original parent plant because yeah. it's just, it's just yeah. the seed. Whereas like, if you do eat a cabbage, you know, you're cutting the cabbage's throat and it's all over for the yeah. cabbage, right? It's over. So you're a vicious that, killer. that is what you, sometimes I feel like I would take my knife out to the garden. You're cabbage it's, killer. It's a little violent, man. Like it's violent. So, um, so you're saying those ones would be like the broccoli cabbage. I'm trying to think of the other ones. I have to eat the whole plant. Yeah. Um, so think maybe about like, like greens, this. like spinach or, or kale. It's really easy to picture on spinach and kale. Those tend to be especially toxic because you're eating the leaf, which what does the leaf do? It's collecting the sun. Yeah. So if you, if you, if you get rid of that leaf, the plant's going to die. 
because it can't it does right. you, you just rid, rid it of itself of it of its solar collectors mm-hmm. so you know you know and i would think if somebody wants to get anything out of this and and this just seems that that seems to make sense it's just really simple they don't have legs they can't run yeah. uh, when you kill an animal you've gotten rid of that defense mechanism with the plant it's still there you, there are there are plants like my dad they would eat poke salad it's like a poor man's salad that's what they would call it like the first greens that would come up in the spring and they would go and collect it mm-hmm. well you had to cook the crap out of that yeah to make it edible yes to where you wouldn't get sick so yes but you've got to wonder well is it still going to bother you in some way sure you might not feel it acutely but yeah. you do got to wonder and, and, you know, forever I've heard, um, maybe it started with like the nourishing traditions crowd, like, you know, spinach and some of those, uh, the kale, I think mm. it's kale. They have the, I think it's oxalic acid. Is that, is that the compound that I'm thinking of? Oxalic you know, acid? I need, I need Rebecca for that one. I, I think that's what it is. And they've always said, you know, there's been that little caveat. Don't eat a lot. Of, you don't eat in giant quantities or, or steam it. It's better to steam it. Um, like everybody knows yeah. ru- rhubarb leaves, you know, when you, you can eat yeah. the stock of rhubarb, but you're, you're not supposed to eat the leaves because rhubarb leaves it, contain a ton of oxalic acid. Isn't which is, that something? Yeah. So, so I'm see, like, now you're saying now we're already that. kind of aware of this, Yeah. but it's hard for us because it's like, eat your vegetables. Right. And then we've grown up doing that. And, and Jill, honestly, I don't think I'll ever convince Rebecca to do, um, animal based. I can convince her, you know, she'll kind of look at me and roll my eyes. Cause I'll give her a big i'll give her the biggest piece of fish you know yeah. just try to <laughs> sure <laughs> but uh, <laughs> bribe a little bit yeah yeah and, and i don't know if i'm gonna push it so far either you know i don't yeah. know how detrimental it, it is because i wonder too if we've it, it's it's maybe too soon too quick i don't need to have to ask some of these experts but have we some some people are more capable mm-hmm. uh, their body for whatever reason are are more capable of digesting these things. You mentioned Weston A. Price. Yes, they'll tell you definitely in that book to soak your grains. Right. Right? Because that breaks down the anti-nutrients and it makes it more digestible. So yeah, we've already kind of been warmed up to this 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 these this idea that there is a more digestible way with some of these things. There is a don't eat the rebarb leaf, eat the eat the stock. Yeah kind of thing that we're already familiar with and now we're taking it to people's beloved kale uh which you know people get kale yeah. crazy i mean they there's do. there's do. t-shirts kale yeah i mean people get excited about it <laughs> yeah christian would be happy to give up the kale i See? like and i'm kind of like eh with kale i grow up a little yeah. bit but I, the spinach i would have a hard time i really like spinach a lot you like so. spinach i do well, so i love it I'd have you to know through that yeah you know, we had this talk with Ken Berry. He, he had counseled. He's also a doctor mm-hmm. and he's online at Ken, uh, Ken Berry across the platforms. And he said, you know, Rebecca was having this, you know, she was saying what you were saying. I just can't give up the broccoli. He's, he's like, let her have her broccoli, have her broccoli, have your broccoli, Rebecca. Justin, don't eat the broccoli. Yeah. Because I don't Fair even enough. have, <laughs> like, it's like, eh. uh, it's, it's not easy. Yeah, it's just not it's just not there for me for a pool. So I'm I, and I'm I'm going to relate to you with the Brock. You you are where you are with spinach. While I'm there with peanut butter. Sure, sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to eat a little bit of peanut butter. Yeah, you know maybe I'm going to be considerate of the grams and and go there. Now I did have a point where I started having. It looked like I was I was having some health a health issue that might be more serious and that could end up being uh more life-threatening and i had been off i wasn't being as strict with with i wasn't eating as clean and i thought you know having that oh my goodness this is going to have an acute effect on me pretty quickly that helps that helps somebody get serious you know yes and, and do things serious so for 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 i think when you guys came over and we had we had lamb chops and we had your, I think they were, was it ribeyes? Mm-hmm, what did we so, have yeah. for side? We probably had a potatoes. I bet we had potatoes. I think, I think Rebecca made macaroni and cheese, but you, it was with noodles <laughs> that were, I know, <laughs> but the noodles There's were because they were made from beans, right? They were garbanzo, I think garbanzo bean. Pasta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, was then good cheese and good uh, 
dairy that yeah, she made. And this was all organic sausage. and yeah. And and normal people, I don't think if if your goal is to lose weight, well, I don't think normal people are gonna are gonna gain from that meal, but I would gain a pound. I, I don't remember. Okay. I probably ate that. I don't remember where I was in my in my I probably ate that. Yeah. I think But it's hard work. to resist Rebecca's I'm mac sure. and cheese. I know. I know. That's why I was like, there's some stuff like for me, it's potatoes. Like I know people hate on potatoes and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I like potatoes even more than broccoli. Like the potatoes are my thing. I'm from Idaho. I, I would eat potatoes every meal. I grow potatoes and I know they're, yeah. they're kind of demonized, but I'm like, well, how bad can they be? We were having this conversation with the kids because kids, whatever reason, really like starches. I need to get one of these yes. carnivore guys on my podcast and be like, you know what? What the heck? Why, why do kids crave these things. Well, now I'm thinking about conversations I've had with Joel. Uh, you know, animals seem to know what they want to eat. Like you can throw yeah. crap to chickens and they won't eat what's poisonous. Right. Um, right. Joel will tell you it's because they don't have TV. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I mean, they're not, true. they're not distracted and they're really in tune with themselves, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or they're not, they're not eating a lot of sugar. Like this sugar can like, I don't know, mess with your natural ability to decipher what you need and want. And like, why don't we crave, um, why don't we crave organ meats? Yeah. You know, so, you know, I've heard, I've heard, I've read survivor story. I like adventure stories and these people are shipwrecked and, uh, they, they're hungry and they finally catch, they, they catch a turtle. They're just craving and going for the liver instinctively. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't had that Jill. Like I have to take liver in a pill form. Uh, you, sure. you like liver? I don't. It's not my favorite. I mean, I'm, I it's actually good. had a, another another gal on this a uh, few episodes ago. She's an expert in organ meats, and she was, like, trying to gear me up to do tongue tacos and liver. Right. And it's on the list. I know it's good for us, but it's not well, something I seek out. I mean, when, and for that, you know it's good for us. I will say this. Get uh, – who, who do we use? Gosh, Becky, where are you at? Um, uh, you can get supplements. Yes. Of grass-fed, yeah. liver, kidney. You know, one, one adage is take what's ailing you. You know, if you're having heart problems, eat heart. I mean, and, and it could be in the pill form. I'm not saying I'm a hero and I eat heart. I mean, if you want that, you can follow Liver King and he eats that stuff mm -hmm. raw. Yeah. But um, you're having these problems, eat that part of the animal. I don't know the science behind that. Somebody would need to look into that. But back to your potatoes thing. If we want to yeah. stay off the scientific record. The, uh, we're having these conversations with the kids. They're learning why I'm, I'm eating carnivore and why I'm being careful, just extra careful. And we're talking about, you know, plant can't run, it's defending itself with toxins. Uh, they're learning that nothing wants to die. Yeah, we're having these conversations with our kids and they're realizing, you know, the plant, plant can't run, it's defending itself. Uh, I don't know if they're buying it or not. I'm not necessarily forcing it on them. Um, then they're, they're, we get to potatoes and, and they understand animals can run. They get that. They get potatoes and they say, oh, oh, dad, no. Potatoes are not toxic because their defense me mechanism is they hide under the ground. <laughs> they're, they're hiders. So that's what I'm going to go with, with onions because I, I like onions and I will eat onions and not count. Yeah. Not count it at all. Like, love a fried onion, love raw onion and stuff eat an onion and yeah. uh, definitely fermented uh, pickles. Well, remember that's a fruit. That's not even a vegetable. Right. So yeah. that's a cucumber. So fermented pickles and then even sauerkraut. Sometimes I'll find myself craving a little bit, put that on the, on the taco, but it's like going back to your simplifying thing. So I'm eating this way. We figured out a way where I cook the meats, mostly meat. So on a taco, um, we have themed nights, uh, Taco Tuesday, Beef Wednesday, lamb, lamb on Thursday, Friday, Fishy Friday, uh, Saturday's pork, Sunday's ch chicken, and Monday's breakfast for dinner. And so let's say we're having taco salad. Well, I can have everything on there, but but the chips. And, and they get and they get like Siete chips. They're not even grain. Yeah, uh, but they are starchy, you know, so they'll have the chips or the taco uh, from Siete and I'll just have everything else. Put the cheese on there and it's I'm OK. I don't 
I don't crave the chips enough to feel uh, left out. Sure. And I certainly don't crave the lettuce enough to feel left out. You know what I mean? I think we have this yeah. pressure. Like, it's weird to not eat my vegetables. It, it is it is kind of weird. And well, we you know, have been in grains. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, I, I think about, I, there's a lot of societal conditioning. Like even, you know, when I was a kid, it was eat your vegetables, but everybody was serving canned green beans, which now I'm like, that didn't have any nutrition. Like, what was the point? Yeah. But, you know, maybe it's that next That's level of we still we're I don't know. I'm, I mean, for anyone listening, I'm, I'm just I like to explore ideas. So I'm just kind of taking myself down this path to see, you know, ex examining <laughs> ideas. I don't know. I'm not I'm not saying I'm going to do this or not do this. It's just interesting to me to to think through it. This is how I learn and this is how I process. But this, um, I, you know, yeah. what made me think when you're saying that is I go back to intermittent fasting. Rebecca tells me they haven't done any and I don't know if it's true or not. They haven't done any study. There's not. All the studying on intermittent fasting is being done on men. Yes. So I don't know if that's the true uh, with carnivore either. Uh, I imagine there's probably more studies on that. It's 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 maybe a little more. It's been around a little longer. I don't know. Because uh, that's the thing too. Intermittent fasting. We used to. It used to be that you were supposed to eat like six meals a day. Remember that? That was like right. Good, oh, for sure. Keep the metabolism. Like never be out. hungry. Yeah. And now we've learned. Well, actually, it's not. It's good to have this period of fast so your your body starts burning fat and stuff like that as opposed to like hanging on to it and you know i when i started going back on the low, lower carb um and getting more getting more serious i go through periods of i can be really disciplined for a really long time and then i kind of slowly get off the wagon and then i'm off the wagon and i know it and i don't care and I know eventually I'll get strong again. And eventually, you know, I try it and I'm not quite strong yet. And then I get back into it. Now I'm in a strong yes. period. Um, that feels very normal. Feels that's, yeah. I mean, that's definitely how we do things. And yeah, it goes, it's a little cyclical, I think. It's, just, <laughs> it's normal. Nature is cyclical. So part of me, part, whenever I get into these topics of like what, what's kind of like our primal nature, what did our ancestors do? One thing that I'm really fascinated by and I need to do more research on is like the different types of cultures and how like our genetic makeup, whether maybe you're from mm -hmm. Europe or maybe you're from an island culture, maybe you're from, uh, you know, an Inuit indigenous type of population. How does that play into what's good for us and what's not? So I don't know if, you know, for this, I, when I think about like the Native Americans who would have lived where I live now, obviously gardening is almost yeah. impo not impossible, but it's really hard yeah. here and they wouldn't have been cultivating much of anything. Um, we had buffalo. So they would have, they ran the buffalo off the cliffs around our house and they would harvest all the buffalo, the organs and the meats and the brains and the fat. So they were obviously very heavy on animal protein and animal products. But then I think about maybe cultures in Asia or island cultures that are going to be a lot of rice and a lot more. I don't know what their, what would their vegetables have looked like? Have you done any research into that? I haven't. And that's fascinating to me too, thinking about what different people would have available. So if you're down in the tropics, I imagine there would be some, but you know, the wild bananas weren't like the bananas we have today. Right. Which, right. Uh, so that's kind of interesting too. One thing that came to my mind when you were saying that is there are, I, I guess, countless amount of plants that you cannot eat. I mean, if I look outside the door, I, you yes. know, uh, the oak tree leaf, the, the, the grass, the most of these plants out here, I actually cannot eat, but there's very few animals, very few that you can't eat. So, and sure. those are everywhere. Like even in, what do you think? Like the Eskimos, it's, they're in the snow all, all year round. Right. There's no growing season. Well, they're eating fish and, and walrus and well and whatever, whatever else. Exactly. I, that's what I've always thought when people like eat your vegetables. I'm like, well, what about them? <laughs> they had no vegetables. Yes. You know, like how did you they, how did that, that balanced out? Yeah. Jill, you take it to such a good perspective. You always go macro and you, and you, you zoom out on the lens and say, what about them? And you can apply that to really start finding truth. I think truth yeah. does not wither, but it's, we just don't always know what the truth is sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, that's that you also, okay. If you want to, if, if let's question the animal uh, that you have to say, well, could, could everybody do it? You, that you, you have right. to be, 
you have to go that way with it too. Yes. Uh, I, I think they could. I mean, I mean, I guess there's some people who are allergic to, to beef. I've heard of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I've heard of anybody who's allergic to all the meats. I've not heard of that. I don't know if there would be like metabolic issues that would cause, I don't know. I, yeah. That would be something you will, you know, what, what's, causing yes. that and how do we address that and where how do we go You're back right. to the fundamentals there so there's probably there's i think that's with any of these diet conversations i'm always very hesitant to um I've, jump on any of the bandwagons whether it's like the latest workout or it's the latest diet yeah. um, just because i'm like there's so much nuance here and it depends on you know are you a, a man or a woman because like you said intermittent fasting yeah. there is some question is it actually good for women to do that a lot it can jack with your hormones um or yeah. diets you know some people do they swear up and down, they feel better vegan. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe, yeah. maybe if your makeup and your health conditions, maybe that is the right thing for you. Who am I to say like, you know, I'm not yeah. can't crawl inside you and tell, tell you how you feel. So I, I think <laughs> I like the new, I like the nuance. I like, I like being able to sit here and go, let's, let's talk about the different options and ask the questions. And what about this group of people? What about this group of people? I think that's, I think that's a good thing. No matter what we're, we're talking, whether yeah. it's religion or politics or diet or health or, or whatever. Well, that's why, uh, that maybe one reason I don't harp on it, like you don't see me preaching about no, no, uh, the animal based diet and my vlog. I mean, we're very um, follow along. This is what we're doing type of thing, but you don't see me preaching that like I might be preaching move the cows every day type of sure. thing. And you know, it's just yeah, everybody. Everybody's different. I don't know for sure, you know, and. This what's working for me, uh, and if that's working for you, great. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's a healthy perspective, and I've always appreciated that about you. Never get preachy on things. I mean, maybe moving the cows, but not in yeah. <laughs> not in an offensive way, right? Yeah. It's not it's not over things that I would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's that's that brings us to a really good segue. I think. Can you talk a little bit about your own health journey? Because you've dealt with some considerable issues, some chronic pain and chronic inflammation. And how has that shaped your perspective of what you're eating? It's everything. So I wouldn't be like be like this. Oh, you know, before I get into that, and you might have to remind me, I, I had this thought that the, one of the reasons is I'm not pushing this so much is because I feel like I don't want to say advanced. Like, I don't want to pretend like this is the ultimate for somebody's health journey. Uh, and I, I realized that we can get people really far, Jill, by just getting them to slow down on the sugar, uh, stop the seed oils, and slow down on the grains. If people just did those three things, you're going to have health, health miracles happen in your life. And really, we're, we need to think about where people are. That's me talking about, you know, with our show and yes. whatnot. Yes. And get them off the junk food and into the outskirts of the grocery store. So yes. if you get off the Oreos or, or, you know, you get off the gluten and you start eating fruits and vegetables and, and, and meat. And, and that's, that, I, that's better. Okay. And that's a yep. lot of where people are. Uh, you know, this, just like veganism, that's an extreme. Mm-hmm. And the carnivore animal base, that's an extreme. And I don't, hope. hopefully nobody gets intimidated thinking, oh, that's where this is going. <laughs> yes. I got to do that to healthy. Oh, Justin said vegetables are, 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 are toxic. I'm not going to plant the garden. Go plant the garden. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> that's, for sure. It's better than what you're doing. <laughs> I think the so, baby yeah, step. Okay. The baby step conversation is important because it is hey, easy. Who's here? Oh, Rebecca. Yeah, that was my, that was, oh, you're happy. <laughs> he is happy. Oh, you're happy Henry too. and Rebecca. That, that was my little rant. You're going to have to remind me of where we were, what was the um, next question. Oh, talking about what prompted you to look into these alternative diets. Because I mean, remember, even when you came to our house for yeah. the Great American Farm Tour, you weren't doing the carnivore stuff, but you were still eating very clean. You were very careful about yeah. what you were eating. And that's for yeah. a reason. Yeah. Yeah. I actually think, and then maybe Rebecca come back. I think she's getting a chair. She um, she started following Slow Down Farmstead, and I bet that's where, if you know her on Instagram, I Tara. Do. Yeah, she's great. Uh, she's great. She she is just so wise and so insightful, and seems 
even so ahead, you know, like you and I are in early 40s. Well, she's probably, is she, is she 50 yet? Okay, so she's, say, she seems a little ahead of us, a little bit of a mentor type figure, probably been doing this for a couple of decades as opposed to a decade or decade and a half. Yeah. And she just, she's on it. She's, she's about it. Uh, she's not, she'll have, she'll have onions and, and she grows a little garden. She does fruit. But it's, it's, she does a lot of fruit. You know, she just did a post I noticed on plums or something. Yeah, I think she that um, they're in season. There's something no, about I think that, she Jill. Can't, like, um, or fermented them. that's it too, Jill. We don't bananas in North Carolina. You brought it up, like bananas in North Carolina. That's not natural. Right. Right. It's not. <laughs> that that is only recently possible. Fruit all year <laughs> round. Yes, maybe okay. you could preserve it in some way. Uh, maybe I don't know what the Native Americans could have done. Maybe they would have dried it out or something. Uh, but you know, animals is, is kill it and eat it right then. I mean, it's yeah. it's stored on hoof. You know, you don't need any yeah. of this storage. Um, so Tara started to warm her up to. It. She thought because I think Tara is she suffering from Lyme. She does have Lyme. Yeah, it's a Lyme story. Mm -hmm. but apparently, a lot of these Lyme people are doing better just eating meat because it's yeah. so easy to digest. It's so non toxic, uh, low carb. That's which is good for people with high inflammation, and she talking about it. I'm not going there because I like my peanut butter and rice and whatever else we're eating, new, uh, mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then I heard, I don't know, I got sick or something, and I listened to uh, Sean Baker on on Joe Rogan, and he's an MD, like he was a surgeon, and he made a great case for eating meat and he's hardcore. Like he's, I would say he's yeah. carnivore. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't eat anything but, but meat. <laughs> you know, I think going, going strict and the family not, I think that's, that's, that's hard. I mean, I'm not sure about Sean, but I think everybody's on board or, no. or maybe they're not. No, they're maybe not. he's just got the will of an ox. Yeah. Um, it is hard. It is hard. And like Christian has done some pretty strict cleanses and they've been for short periods of time. Yeah. But like there was one where it was, I mean, it was strict and, to, to cook, he's not a great cook. So sometimes he can feed himself out of yeah. the refrigerator. But like, if there's anything beyond that, like it's on me. And so like to cook two separate meals, I finally, like after three days, yeah. I'm like, we're just going to all eat what, you're, like a bowl of broth. That's all we're eating. Because yeah. I don't want to cook. Yeah. Two, it's really hard. Yeah, it's challenging. Yes. I did that for Rebecca when she went gluten-free. I didn't need to go gluten-free. I mean, I should have because I had lime, but we yeah. didn't know that. So she went gluten-free. I just said, you know what? I'm not going to eat a biscuit uh. in front of you. Yeah, I know. Let's, it feels let's, so mean. Uh, <laughs> let's. Uh, I'll just go gluten free with you, suffer yeah. with you. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, and then your doctor was like, "I don't want you eating gluten." Yeah, and yeah. Like, so oh, it turns out I'm not supposed to eat gluten. So, fair but enough. I showed. I, mean, I showed you. I would you love did. you. Did you do love I me? And you. I've encouraged him. I'm like, if he's out and Jill somewhere, loves Christian. and it's good, it's good. Like <laughs> gluten, like it's a good yeah. product, like it's sourdough or whatever. I'm like, you should eat it. And he's like, I can't eat that. Like not in front of you. And now he's not <laughs> eating it because he's kind of yeah. hard. Sure. So then it was so just I meat. July was coming up, and I said. Check it. I'm just gonna eat just just meat July, you and did. did it. Did it for 30 days. I think I cheated once yeah. a week. I'd have ice cream with honey in there. So turns out, you know, carnivore MD. A little bit of honey's fine. Fruit. Uh, it's not the it's not the devil. You know, it's all right. Yeah. And that makes it a little more. That makes it more sustainable. Attainable. Somebody was telling me I couldn't do the carnivore because I miss my spices. I couldn't have meat without. Yeah. Uh, Salt, pepper. Like yeah. I don't mind meat with just salt. Okay. It's so easier, not... a lot easier, because I have to find the herbs. Jill, you're probably very organized, and your herbs are probably where they're supposed to be. Yeah. But our, yeah. ours get scattered, and we're going out. It's just like, ah, just put some salt yeah. on it and just go. So you're and you're not in your like head. Not... You need the sauces and I the need herbs. the sauces and the herbs. I mean, the so gravy you're not, you're maybe. not doing any of that. You're not doing pepper. No, you're not no. doing no. rosemary. Spices. No, but I would no, say, wait, if do... somebody's tempted... To do the carnivore, and that's holding them back. Just spicing yeah. your meat and doing gravy and sauces. Do the gravy and the sauces okay. and the spices. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's better yeah. than nothing. Sure, I can appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, the strict that. carnivores would not do herbs on the meat. Okay. <laughs> She's it like, okay. My heart. <laughs> but like, okay, hold on a second. Like, for instance, okay. we do Taco Tuesday. 
Yeah, I eat the. We put, she makes the taco I put seasoning. Chili in powder the, and cumin okay. and salt and garlic and onions in the meat. This is and it. He eats it like he's okay. not like, oh, I can't have that. Jill, like, I know you do this. I'll say it for yes. the audience here. The carnivore diet. Um, I don't serve the carnivore diet. The carnivore diet serves me. Yes. I don't. I don't serve homesteading. Homesteading serves me. Say that yeah. for anything. Yeah. Okay. That is so good. And, and you so get good. the point. The po- I know you get the point. The yeah. point is, if it's you, design your own. You don't have to go by this book. You write the book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even yeah. if it's a, even if it's a little notebook. I'm writing the book right now. No, there's no book called fifty the fifty carb diet. Yeah. I've just figured that out, meshed it together, and anything I want can be well, those so carbs. It works for you. We're all it could be the ice cream. I, I, I'll Google how many carbs are in chocolate ice cream, and we'll have our honey sweet and chocolate ice cream, guilt free. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. And then cheat. A birthday's coming up. We had his birthday. He was one years old. Oh. I'm not going to count carbs that day. I'm going to drink the kombucha. I'm going to eat the cake. I'm going to have the, the pizza. as much pizza as I want with it. <laughs> yeah, and that's healthy. I feel like that. That just feels balanced to me. I like. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah, because what is life without a cupcake? <laughs> totally. Like, I thought, Write it down. Yeah. When I see people with like, t-shirt. <laughs> this is the thing. This is the thing. When Justin was like, "I'm going carnivore," I'm like, "You're never gonna eat a cupcake," and he's just like, "Well," and I'm like, "Let's be realistic." Eat the ourselves. cupcake. Your yeah. kid wants you to eat their birthday cake with them. Yeah. We. Yeah. There is something the kids will say to me. Are you gonna eat tonight? Are you gonna eat supper tonight? Talking about their birthday meal because we do special meals. They'll ask me that. Are you going to eat tonight? It means something. To them, yeah. It's yes. not enough just to sit down with them. I could even tell them stories while they're eating. They don't care. They want me yeah. to fork it up too and not There's, something yeah. else. They want to eat, me to eat what they're eating. Food is community. I mean, there is a huge community aspect to it. So yeah, I can, I can see that. That makes a lot of sense. So, so ha- he's, he does cheat. <laughs> yeah. Which I've seen, you know, I see people, you know, even some of the like super strict people on social media, like, I, I don't know how they have that self-control to never have the cupcake ever once. Like, I'm just like, I don't like you're, I just don't know how you do it. Like I got, I mean, yeah. I can find <laughs> anything. I know. I, I, I lose them. I lose them when yeah. they show their Thanksgiving meal and they didn't even have turkey. Yeah. Let yeah. alone sides. They had a yeah. steak. Come but on. Hold on a second. I can't have see a, it. You, you can even have, you can have turkey. <laughs> but yes. Hold on a second. I think what it is, is that, so for some people, if they do go off of their diet, then they don't feel good. Mm. Yeah. And I can see that if that's, that's it. That's right. If that's like, that's for instance, like for if me. There's like there's a cute if, health threat. If, yeah. Like if I ate gluten, like yep. I would feel terrible yeah. if I did that. So like, yeah, we just do an alternative. So I I can understand. Yeah, you would never cheat like, eat gluten. Justin doesn't. You would never do that. You've Justin never done that in years. Doesn't need. Um. He doesn't feel bad if he eats that cupcake. No. Or has yeah. the we like, to, he doesn't feel bad the next day. Joel, so it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to Joel not. Joel Salatin not asked us for breakfast. Remember that? Oh yeah. I ate the biscuit. Yeah. Rebecca, I eat the biscuit. I did not I'm eat at Joel's house. I'm, I'm invited to his breakfast biscuit. table in his house. Come on. You better eat yeah. Joel's biscuit. You eat the, yeah. They might have <laughs> used, yeah. used vegetable all far on though. Yeah. And uh, Rebecca didn't. Yeah. Because that's it, a good point, it would be though. an acute issue. Because you're, if you're going to feel it for three days later, then I think I could have the self control to say, no, thank you. If I'm going to be miserable for three days, you yeah. know, like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah totally. Good, yeah. good point there. But I think that if you are, I'm mean, so like, if a person literally feels that, then I can see why they wouldn't veer from their, from yeah. the diet that they yeah. found that I really works that. for them. I see that. But for just to do it for the sake of doing it, I just am like, yeah, you know, eat the cupcake. Yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah. Agree. <laughs> so Justin, have you seen, I mean, you've seen some considerable differences when you, since you started this animal diet, like in your Lyme yeah. symptoms, like how, what does that look like? Well, when I'm on the animal diet, I can, um, I've got more energy. I'm, I'm able to maintain my weight when I'm not veering off of it too much, not eating too many carbs. Uh, feel great. I mean, I've been doing this a year and a half and strong, uh, clear, clearer in thought, sleeping better. It's easier to digest meat. 
So less time in the bathroom. <laughs> and I'm all about saving that time. You can see it easier cooking, can. uh, easier cleaning up, uh, less time in the bathroom. <laughs> yep. I mean, you are saving time in all the places. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Less time scrolling, sitting on the toilet. <laughs> yep. Yep. I mean, less time on uh, social media. Everybody admit it. <laughs> Everybody yep. said- that is where it happens. That is where it happens. The kids can't find you. It's, it's true. Yep. It's true. So, um, well, yeah. I yeah. I think for anyone listening, maybe if you if you are dealing with that chronic pain or chronic conditions, that might be worth looking into. Because I know that I've I've heard of other people for sure who are also dealing with those underlying things that have had some pretty interesting results with with a yeah, I mean, won't or hurt. a version of yeah. You know, I'm sure. I, I say it won't hurt, but you know, there are things. I wish it would do more for me. I'll, I'll put it out there too. It's not this miracle diet for me. It has been for a lot of people. There are a lot of crazy stories. Uh, well, it hasn't been crazy for me. I mean, I still have tense back pain. I still have the foot pain from the Lyme. I still yeah. crash emotionally every six or eight weeks. Yeah. Uh, sure, I'm a little brighter. I'm a little clearer thought. I'm probably sleeping a little bit better. Uh, I, I can control my weight. I can control the inflammation. Mm-hmm. It's not a miracle. And I say, oh, it wouldn't hurt to try it. And maybe I take that back because people tell me ideas all the time. Well, you should do the hyperbaric. You should do, you know, for your Lyme. You should do colloidal silver. You should do uh, ozone. You should do this and that. Well, these things are expensive and take time. And in the case of going animal, that would take a lot of self-discipline, maybe some sacrifice surrounding the family and the culture there. If you knew it was going to work... Hold on a second. You would do it all day long. If, yeah. if Rebecca knew gluten, which she does, knocks her out acutely. She doesn't touch it. But Tara it's, from Slow Down Farm said it's been on it for two years. And she's... Yeah. It took two years. So it's gonna, yeah. it's not going to be overnight. I feel like for so much of our natural health remedies, yeah. if you want to use that word, it just takes time. We're so used to it. You're pill. right. And I mean, yeah. like... That's Jeff- right. Because the pill... Mm-hmm. Take the pill... And be done. But like our natural yeah. remedies during some of these illnesses I've had it's over the summer. It's very intense. Take this, pi- yes. take this supplement at this time. We Get do in like the bath every for two 20 hours minutes. Of herbal now take the 40 hours. minute sauna. And yeah. it's, it's when I was healing from reactive arthritis over the summer, I was a professional healer. Not in like healing people, but healing myself. Yes. I was full time taking care of yourself. Getting better because yeah. I was making sure I laid in the sun. I was making <clears> sure <throat> I got enough sleep, took a nap if I needed it. Etc. Yeah. So I think that a lot of times too, like you have chronic illness, you've been sick for nine years. Yeah. Yeah. Three, 30 days on a carnivore diet isn't going to take that that away. That's a good point. Yeah. And so I think that a lot of times we want it to, we want it to be, I stopped eating whatever and now I am healed (laughs) in in a day and a half. Or I did this. We want it even more. I did this. I, 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 I went and did hmm. the ozone and, and, and uh-huh. it got me. Well, like we're looking at hyperbaric chamber for him and I'm like, how many does he need? And she's like, well, it depends upon how sick he is. And I'm like, well, <laughs> we know it's yeah. not going to be two sessions. We just know. And that's hard. I mean, when, like Christian deals with chronic, he has as, asthma, we're, we're always kind of working on and um, all kinds of allergies and stuff. And it, it's so slow. It's so frustrating. And I feel like a lot of times in our modern culture, I know, I know a lot of people are just like, you know what? I'm just going to pick the, the pill. <laughs> just give me the pill. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's easier. Yeah. It's so much easier because like, there's been times he's done cleanses or fasting or whatever. And I'm like, it gets a little bit better, but it doesn't get, I'm like, I want it to just disappear. I want to have the story. Like you said, look what I did. Yeah. And now the asthma has gone forever. And it just, it's not always like that. I know you make a good point there. Long-term yeah. with health long-term. remedies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it takes nine months to grow a kid. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you just don't go. Like, yeah. you just, it doesn't, it, it's not, it. it well, nine, nine plus. Nine months. Nine months plus 22 you, years. Whatever, however long <laughs> you know what grow I mean. up. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it takes a it takes a process to, yeah. to do these things. And one practitioner I talked to, she was like, yeah, I tell people for every year they've been sick, it's going to be at least a month of healing wow you know every every year is a month so if you've been sick for nine years it's gonna take you nine months to get better 
yeah um with that particular person so i mean and then even then that's probably best yeah. case scenario it could take longer yep. <laughs> you know totally yeah yep good things take time so well guys we're we're over our time but i'm not complaining because this was an awesome conversation um okay. we, we tend to be we're all about the marathon podcast for <laughs> I think, what, <laughs> how long was the one we did at your house? Like three, three hours, hours and 25 and minutes. It was, but it was so good. It was the fastest <laughs> was three fun. hours of my life. It was a yeah, blast. It was so, so it was so um, much fun. It was so much fun. For those of you, again, if you have Abundance Plus, you can go check it out. It, the video version's in there, right? As well yep. as audio. Yeah. yeah. And we talk about everything. We didn't talk about carnivore. We talked about everything else nope. in the whole entire everything world. Else. <laughs> so it got real juicy. Like real and juicy. And it was about you. Things. So if people want to really yeah. get to know you, they got to go see that. I know. I, I said some things I've never said publicly before. So Ooh. it's juicy. Yeah. Um, and then, so Abundance Plus will also be, I think I could, can I say this about? Yeah, go ahead. Thing on, okay. We had a film crew here, yeah. Justin's film crew. He wasn't here, unfortunately, but his film crew was last week um, recording an episode for his series on his streaming platform, um, the Divergent series. So we're going to be in an episode there and you can go check that out. That'll be a couple months before it's up though, right? Yeah, yeah, six weeks to eight It'll weeks, be a little while. Probably. Okay. Yeah. There was some very masterful editing happening there. So yeah. I will yeah. drop a link to Abundance Plus down in the show notes so you guys can check it out. And yeah. also, I just have to say this because I think tomorrow is the day. Talk about Yay. the very exciting book that's that's happening. The book. Oh, tomorrow is Where the is day. Oh, my goodness. So officially yeah. ship. The official release day is tomorrow, March 1st. Oh, my goodness. So this will be airing shortly yes. after that. So yeah. Pub day is a big day. Are you guys going to have a party? Crazy. Are you going to have a cupcake can't... tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> we, cupcake what will we have? I don't know. Uh, what would a <laughs> animal-based diet? I guess I would have extra chocolate in my yogurt that night. That's fair. That's fair. You know, chocolate. Or maybe too. we'll have to make ice cream or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's always fun. Because that's not really a treat. Yeah. Right. So it's just your honey yeah, good cream. Yeah. And it's made yeah. from cream from our cow. Yeah. So anyway. And it's got egg yolk uh, in it. <laughs> it's just Nutri- it's nutrient dense. This is the book. You know, Jill, you've written a book. I don't know how you felt when your first book came out. I thought it would be anticlimactic. It hasn't been. I'm still like, yeah. I still really enjoying this. It's still, yes. it's still neat. You know, it's, it's, it's probably, I like to smell it. You just like to smell yeah. yours. <laughs> totally. It's like, a. it's like, I mean, it's people make fun of the analogy of book writing as giving birth, but it is like, it's like a baby. Yeah. It's like you're, it's your, you put a lot, a lot of time yeah. in that. Any, any author does. So it's I a was deal. sharing. I was sharing on the blog today in my filming that, well, I think what's special about this book is people feel when they see you, they see us and, and they're starting to get into homesteading. They, they feel, it feels unattainable. Yeah. And actually we all have that. I think when we we're in the beginning, you know, we see the Joel Salatins or whoever went before us and it does feel unattainable. Like where do I start type of thing? And you started long enough ago that you were probably like Rebecca and I, you just had to get the books. Well, yeah. there weren't that many books. I was like, Rebecca, how did you end up choosing Joel Salatin and Elliot Coleman? You know, Elliot Coleman for the gardening, Joel Salatin for the animals. She's like, well, there just wasn't a lot of choice. I mean, I'm yeah. glad those were her choices because those end up being the right people. But then we had to piece together Intro to Permaculture book by Bill Mollison, Elliot Coleman for the gardening, Joel Salatin for the the meat chickens and the, uh, uh, the beef, and then the... Uh, uh, Harvey Usry for the chickens. Yeah. And we had a, a, a book that those books that thick just to learn gardening, gardening and chickens. Yeah. So I think what I've done, Jill, no, I, I'm pretty sure I can say I know what I've done. What I've done is taking that knowledge and just really just honing it in to just step one, step two, step three, permaculture, chickens, gardens, and a book that thick. That you can read in the evening, and that also includes. We should have. Uh, what's the name of that? Huh? I can't think of it. It's. It's also. There's also lifestyle in this book. It's also. Yes. It's not just the guide. If you look at the last two chapters and in, in the first chapter, so thirty percent of the book is lifestyle. There's fun stories in there. Uh, I can. I condense what you would have to do to get started reading this many books down to this many that you can read in the evening, yeah. and you're gonna laugh. And it's beautiful. I, it's like it's like a coffee table book. It's gorgeous. Yes. 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 Yeah. That's the first reaction people have. They they pick it up and they they just 
they just look at the pictures and just say, oh, such beautiful pictures. The same guys, Jill, the same guys who filmed your divergence mm -hmm. came once a month and did photos for us. So it's oh, an nice. entire season. I don't think this is a video podcast, is it? It is. It is. Oh, dear. We've always listened to Surprise, your podcast. Surprise, you're, you're on camera. Video <laughs> I didn't know that this was actually going to be. <laughs> yes, I just video. started video I, podcasting. Oh, no. So. Why did you Surprise. have to start with me? <laughs> I know. Sorry. So, there we go. Oh, this is terrible. All I would have, like, put on pants. I'm wearing sweatpants. It's fine. That's you're you're okay. fully clothed. It's fine. Um, but, no, it's a, it's a gorgeous book, guys. I got it last week. I got a preview copy or an early copy. And I just love how you broke down your systems because I feel like that can – that those, like, how do you get chickens into the garden? That was so confusing to me for a while. Or, or yeah. your, um, you know, your tractors and your tilling and all of that. It's very easy to understand and very yeah. clearly laid out. So Good. highly recommend Good. it. Thank you. So, Thank you. Um, by the time, let's see, by the time this is live, you guys, you can go, it'll be out on shelves. So yeah. you, Amazon, right? All your local bookstores, all the For big sure. Barnes Amazon. and Noble. Yeah. Yeah. Best thing to do yeah. is probably go to the rudelife.com and we'll have different oh, yeah. links okay. to different retailers okay. and, uh, probably different news Rude updates Life. and stuff. Com. We'll put that in the, uh, in the show notes as well. So, okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Well, this was a blast as yeah. usual. Always a pleasure to chat with you guys. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to share before we, before we jump off? That's it. You've done good. That's it. All right. Awesome. Well, I so appreciate your time. I know you got a lot going on and, uh, I feel I'm, I'm intrigued. I think these conversations are so valuable. I mean, I don't plan on giving up the broccoli and potatoes quite yet, yeah. but this was Maybe very this eye opening week. and it was good. It was just good to be able to <laughs> broccoli bounce <laughs> ideas. <laughs> Broccoli forever, Rebecca. Right. I just played <laughs> the broccoli. Whole bunch. Well, he helped me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. And yeah, happy book launch week too. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah.